All right, so this is the first hint going out for the wormhole question. We have several points on a 2D array, 2D grid. So we have up to 12 wormholes, only 12 wormholes. So it's a very small number. So think about that first. N is only at max 12. And it's, it's an even number, obviously, so that everybody can have a pair. So we got wormholes kind of scattered across on this number plane. And uh, we want to find out number of combinations of pairings such that it creates a cycle. So what we need to do, number one, before we do anything else, is, is to find out the naive approach and see how bad it gets. Now this n being so small probably is an indication that we can brute force much of this solution, if not uh, everything. So um, we'll kind of take a look at that first. I'm going to label each of these each of these um, points. Now I think one, two, three, four, six, six is enough. So six is enough. So what we have to do, brute force or a naive approach is we need to find out every single pairing, right? So, th so think of cases where A goes with B, C goes with D, E goes with F. A goes with B, C goes with E, and D goes with F. A goes with B, C goes with F, and uh, D goes with E, and so on, right? And we also want to do this uh, avoiding any sort of redundancies. So in this case, uh, every single combination we come up with, you want that to be, uh, you want each pair to be um, alphabetically sorted so that we don't accidentally uh, count B, A, F, C, and E, D as a different pairing to that one because they're actually the same pairing, okay? But we've, we've been doing that all the time. We're actually looking at the combinations. So how do you find every single well, um, pairings given and points? So in a naive approach, it'll go like this. You're going to pick the very first point that does not have a partner and have A pick its partner. So it could be any one of the B, C, D, E, and F. Okay, so A is going to pair up with one of these. After you have established a pair, then you simply move on to the next uh, next point and have it choose its partner. So recursively, uh, next points will not have like multiple. So B does not have multiple choices to make. B will simply identify the next point in an alphabetical order to go next. So these points, C, B, 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 these points will then go out and pick their partners from the pool of points that have not yet had a partner. So in this case, C can choose between D and E and F, whereas this B can choose between D and E and F, right? But uh, this one, for example, we already have picked A, E, and B, so we can choose from D, C, D, and F, right? Something like that. Uh, once you have the second pairing, so this will be our first pair, and this will be our second pair. Then the uh, next rows will simply have uh, well, sing a single choice. So in this branch, we'll have uh, D and F as the third pair. Okay. Now this will only go down to 12 levels. So I want you to stop and think about the complexity. What is the worst case? complexity or the worst case runtime in coming up with all the different combinations, right? All right. And then the last thing you do is for each sort of leaf. So by the time you're here, we are looking at this, this path that will tell us that the pairing that we're looking at is A, B, C, E, and D, F. So with these three pairings, does that lead to any cycles? If it does, we add one to some total count, right? And then if this is also as a cycle, then we add one and then you can do that for every single leaf there is, and then you have yourself an answer. So once again, I want you to think about and calculate the complexity and see if it will, um, if it will not exceed the threshold. What you are trying to calculate is 
complexity of coming up with all the combinations, and two, complexity of actually determining if that particular pairing has a cycle in it. So I leave that up to you.